Well, happy Christmas and welcome to our daily service. I'm really glad that you've tuned in, that you're engaging with us here online and trust that the service will, much more importantly, help us together engage with our God. I'd like to begin today where we left off yesterday in Luke chapter 2 with the shepherds, having just heard from the angel of the Lord. Suddenly... A great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the grace that you have given us over these last few weeks to treasure the Lord Jesus Christ, to glorify you for sending your Son to become human. We pray, as we enter into this post-Christmas season, that you would help us not to forget him and all you've reminded us of him. Today, Lord, use your word to keep awakening us to him and his glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Born of the Virgin Mary, we're told. We continue the story we've just read about the angels appearing to the shepherds on that Galilean hillside. And what happens next? Let's continue to listen. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told him about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise the child, he was named Jesus. The angel, the name the angel had given him before he was conceived. Now put yourself in the sandals of those shepherds. You're watching your flock by night on that rolling Galilean countryside, and an angel of the Lord appears to you, and the glory of the Lord surrounds you you. You're told that you'll, you should go uh, to the town of David and there the, a sign will be found. A baby will be wrapped in cloths and will be lying in a manger. And we're told that the shepherds were told that this is the Messiah, the Lord. What would you have done? After then, a whole host of heaven breaks out around the angel of the Lord and sings out glory. After they disappeared, would you have stayed there? Would you have knelt? Would you have worshipped in awe? Well, we're told what they did do. They said, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened and made their way to the city of David and then found this baby boy there, found him in a manger. They hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger, in the feeding trough. 
and then went out into the, into the town, told all who they could find what they had seen on, on the hillside and what they had seen in the major and were told that all were amazed. Have you found yourself amazed as you've reflected on this story afresh? Part of the reason I think often we're not amazed as we should be when we hear this testimony is that our surrounding world, I think, reckons it as a, a nice, cute story that might have some moral or ins inspirational value for us, but certainly isn't historically true. But we know that it's being framed for us by the author of the Gospel, who writes it saying that he's intending to give an orderly account of all those things that have happened recently as they've been taken in by eyewitnesses. And so we're to understand that the only reason that we have the account of the angels on the hillside is that these shepherds have relayed it and have and others have relayed the amazement that was experienced as they spread the news. Are you amazed as you hear this as an account of what actually happened in Galilee at that time when Jesus was born? Are you amazed? Imagine those shepherds. Now imagine you're being Mary. You've already been told who this child is. If you go back in your Bible uh, later on today, perhaps, and look at Luke chapter 1, verses 32 and 33, you'll see that these shepherds aren't the only ones who've had encounters with angels recently. Um, Mary, as you know, has had an account with the angel Gabriel, we're told. And she's told by Gabriel that the baby who will be born to her will be called the Son of the Most High, the Son of God. How will I be ha having a baby when I'm a virgin, Mary asks. And she's told that the Holy Spirit will overshadow her, so that the one who is born by her will be called the Son of God. And yet, when it comes to actually give birth to him, they've made this trip to Bethlehem, and there's no room for her to stay in a proper inn, and she has the child, and all that's there to place him in is a feeding trough. And yet these shepherds come and speak of him being hailed by highest heaven. Who They're overawed, overcome with amazement. Can you imagine Mary trying to put these things together? The humility, the exaltation, all in her arms, were told wonderfully that when Mary heard all this, she treasured it up all in her heart and pondered them in her heart. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in, in her heart, we're told. Have you been treasuring these things? Have you been pondering them? Consider Mary. Consider those shepherds again as they go back to their uh, their pastures. In one sense, imagine that pasture being just the same as they left it. The, the glory is gone. The, perhaps the night sky is out again. The pasture is still there. The, the sheep we trust are still there. Everything on one level is the same. Everything on the most fundamental level has utterly changed. They've been greeted by the host of heaven and set their eyes upon whom they're told is the Messiah, their Messiah. And they go away, we're told, they returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Are you glorifying and praising God? Do you have a newfound trust that God uh, does what he says he will do, just as the shepherds must have had as they followed the angel's instruction and went and found it just as they had been told, utterly amazed at what he'd shown them, freshly touched by God's faithfulness and the generosity of his gift. Are you amazed? Are you treasuring and pondering? Are you glorifying and praising this story, of course, doesn't put those exhortations on us as big heavies. That, that's the farthest thing from the tone of this passage. The tone is one of 
things happening around these people which are far greater than, than them, which pick them up and carry them along, and they find themselves in the sweep of God's salvation plan for this world. And they're amazed, and they treasure, and they ponder, and they glorify, and they praise. Why don't we join them in doing so as we sing this song together?
And why don't we close our time with, a, with just a short time of prayer. Father, again, we um, stand once again post-Christmas with a sense that it's gone far too fast for us. And we know that it points to such great reality about who you are and what you've given us in your Son. And yet so often the season can breeze us by and so we stop and pray that you'd forgive us for the ways we haven't been amazed, we haven't treasured and pondered, we haven't glorified and praised you. But thank you that your invitation to respond to the Son of God being human in these ways still stands. And so we worship you. We praise you. We honor afresh Jesus as our Lord and Savior and commit our lives to obeying him and pursuing his interests in this world of his above our own, indeed above all else. Would your spirit enable us to do so to his great praise and glory. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, again, happy Christmas. Would you go into the rest of your day and indeed the rest of this season knowing the Lord's glory and his peace and treasuring what he's done for you in Christ. Amen. Go in peace. 